opportunity we have to worship and adore the name of the Lord. What better thing to do, what better hope to wake up to each morning than to know that God loves us and we can love him in return. And as we demonstrate our love for him by the life that we live, try to live a holy and pleasing life to God, the God of our Father, as witnessing, I love the Lord, we can just hasten to, hasten to the throne of God. This throne, oh, of the Lord, surely do love you, Lord. Hasten to his throne, Lord. This morning we hasten to your throne, Lord. Where every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus, you are Lord. It's happy to know that we can hasten to your throne, that we can come to you in spite of what we are going through. No matter what our situations are, no matter what the troubles or the problem or the dilemmas are, we can hasten to your throne. I'll hasten to this throne. I'll hasten to this throne. Hasten to the throne of God, that where you find comfort, that where you find answers to your problem, you find solution. Praise to its throne. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Excuse me. Hmm. Just hasten to the throne of God. Morning praise. I hasten back to um, singing my theme song and then I go straight into my devotional. Welcome again, and this is day number 30. Day number 30 that we are going to be doing today, but I'm going to sing the theme song, Open My Eyes That I May See. <coughs> Claim seeds of truth thou hast for me. Pray 
place in my hand the wonderful key that would unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open mine eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open mine hair that I may hear, Voices of truth thou sendest clear, And while the wave not fall on my hair, Everything falls, will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine hairs, illumine me, Speak. Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warmth through every wave Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Father God, we ask you one more time just to breathe on us as we listen to this reading, as we are impressed by the reading lord we ask that you will grant us the desire of wanting to be more like you i thank you for being there with me thank you for joining me on my 40 days of prayer and devotion in preparation for the second coming of jesus christ all oh, these readings are so fascinating they are so inspiring they are so soul filling I thank God for this. I, I am at day number 30. Day number 30. The caption for today's devotional is God's commandments and abiding in Christ. God's commandments and abiding in Christ. Obedience to God's commandments and abiding in Christ go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. Jesus said, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. John chapter 15 verse 10. <coughs> Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's law are inseparable. When we abide in Christ and he abides in us, the Ten Commandments will become an integral part of our life because the Holy Spirit will be writing them on our hearts. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the art. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 3. In fact, it was Jesus who before his incarnation gave Moses the Ten Commandments. The God who gave the commandments revealed himself to Moses as I am. And God and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, I sent me unto you. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14.
Jesus claimed to be the I am of the Old Testament. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. John 8 verse 58. In Paul's letter, we find many instructions concerning the attitudes and behaviors the Lord wants us to exhibit in our life. Paul gives very implicit instruction concerning behavior that he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sinned not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hand the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 32. Why is so much space given in the Bible to inform us of the behavior? God wants us to follow. The reason is that we need to know the attitude and behavior He wants us to have so that we can be aware of situations when we are tempted to behave wrongly. If we didn't know God's will in these areas, we wouldn't choose to let Christ manifest that aspect of his character in us. For example, if a believer doesn't know it is wrong to hold on to anger and say something critical when someone wrongs him, he won't turn his thought away from the anger and critical spirit to begin to begin to feel. He won't choose to let Christ manifest his non-anger and non-critical spirit in the situation because he is unaware that anger and critical spirit are wrong. And so, he will not reflect Christ's character in that particular situation. He has not begun developing Christ's character within himself in that area of his life. When Christ lives in us, he will seek to live out his life in and through us. This means that he will seek to live out the Ten Commandments in our lives just as he did when he walked this earth. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 40, verse 8. Also, the Ten Commandments are inseparably connected to love. Jesus made this very clear when he taught. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life. And he said unto him, 
Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew 19, 16 through 19. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus answered him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest and great commandment, and the second is like this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, 35-40. The Apostle Paul taught that love and God's Ten Commandments refer to the same experience in one's life. Hold no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth Another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh. No ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 10. The first four commandments reveal how we love God. And the last six tells us how we are to love each other. Hence, Christ abiding in us. The Ten Commandments, love and intimately knowing Jesus, are all closely related. You cannot have one without the other. John wrote of this close connection in his first epistle. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abide in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. First John 2 verses 3 through 6. John clearly linked intimately knowing Jesus, the Ten Commandments, love and abiding in Him. He said that if we are abiding in Christ, we will be walking or living as He lived. Why? Because Jesus will be living out His life in us and our lives will be lives of obedience to God's Ten Commandments. Commandments. I say amen and amen to that. <laughs> For our personal reflections and discussion, how did Jesus connect abiding in him with the Ten Commandments? How did Jesus connect abiding in him with the Ten Commandments? How did Jesus connect love with the Ten Commandments? How did Jesus Connect love with the Ten Commandments. Next is who gave the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai? Who gave the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai? Where does God write the Ten Commandments today and through what means? Where does God write the Ten Commandments today and 
by what means and finally how do you plan to apply the lesson of this devotional study to your life this week now for prayer activities call your prayer partner and discuss this devotional with him or her pray with your prayer partner for God to continue to baptize each of you with his Holy Spirit pray that God will bring revival in your life in my life in the life of the church pray for God to write his Ten Commandments law in your heart in my heart in our heart and to lead us to let Jesus live out his obedience to the Ten Commandments in our lives and pray for the individual on your prayer list include the following text in your your prayer it is time for you to act O Lord your law is being broken Psalm 119 126 from the New International Version remove our law breaking from us give us a heart of obedience father we know you love you love us lord you care for us you want to you want to save us to the uttermost the only person who can prevent ourselves from being saved is us so father we ask you to remove self from us this morning remove self which is the law breaking attitude from us and help us to be obedient to your will to every single one of them father teach us your way and help us to allow you to live out your life in us we cannot live the Christian life by ourselves and that's why you promise us the Holy Spirit and so Lord we have to be in readiness for him him to live and reign in our hearts so father we pray that you remove from us everything that oppose your will everything that wars and fight against your ten commandments we pray that you will remove that spirit from us and help us to accept your word accept your law and father that we will obey them and that the spirit the Holy Spirit will take full control of our lives and that we will be saved for eternity now and forevermore we ask forgive us of our sins sin in the transgression of the law and father we don't want to transgress your law anymore we don't want to break them anymore we want to keep them oh father God because they reveal your character they reveal who you are and they tell us, dear Father, how we are to relate to each other. Hear our prayer this morning. Bless your word to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God loves you, and so do I. Walk with God, and he will walk with you. Be blessed, and be a blessing. Have a wonderful Sabbath in the presence of God. God bless. Bye-bye.